Do you see this volleyball? It's very flat. And so I'm going to put some air in it using this hand pump. That's quite a big bit better. Now the volleyball has a decent amount of air inside. Hi folks, I'm Mr. Pinola. And today my question to you is this. Is the air inside the volleyball currently, since it was just pumped in, at a higher temperature than the air in this room, at a lower temperature than the air in this room, or at the same temperature as the air in this room? So I just asked you, since I just pumped air into this volleyball, is the air inside at a higher temperature, lower temperature, or the same temperature as the air in this room? The answer lies in the first of what are three laws that deal with the way that heat flows. We have a special name in physics for the way that heat flows. We call it Thermodynamics. And just like Newton had three laws of motion, there are three laws of thermodynamics. Let's take a look at what those are and see if we can answer our question about the air inside the volleyball. The first law of thermodynamics is pretty straightforward. In fact, you've sort of learned about it before, and maybe you didn't even know it at the time. The first law says that energy is conserved. In other words, energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but it can be transferred. So let's think about the air inside my volleyball. When I Put the needle inside the volleyball, if I can find the opening. And I pump air in using the hand pump. I am transferring energy from my body to the volleyball. In fact, if you wanted to get more specific with our physics definitions, I am doing work using the hand pump. That's because I'm applying a force on the hand pump through a distance. In fact, you can even see the distance that the hand pump will move inwards. So I'm applying a force over a distance, doing work. And as a result, I am transferring energy to the volleyball. So let's keep that first law in mind now. Energy is always conserved. So if I transfer energy to the volleyball, and then I finish pumping, that means the energy of the air molecules inside the volleyball must have more energy than the air in this room. And in fact, that's true. If you originally thought that the air inside the volleyball was at a higher temperature than the air in the surrounding room, you would be correct. And that's because I did work using the hand pump, I transferred energy to the volleyball. And therefore, since we're specifically talking about thermodynamics and thermal energy, my work served to increase the amount of thermal energy inside the volleyball, thus raising the temperature of the air that was being pumped in. This is very similar to if you were to inflate a bicycle tire. You would do work as you push down on the pump to inflate the tire. The bicycle tire would gain volume as air would be pumped inside, and the air inside the tire would be at a higher temperature than the air in the surroundings. And that's because you did work, you transferred energy, energy must be conserved, and therefore the air inside the, hot, inside the tire must be at a higher temperature than the surrounding region. That's the first law of thermodynamics. Now, you may have wondered why I'm doing this video inside my kitchen. Well, that's because to demonstrate the second law of thermodynamics, 
I have to show you a little bit about my freezer. If I were to leave my freezer open, which way would heat flow? Well, I think many of you understand that heat flows from high to low temperature. And that means that heat would flow from the room, which would be at a higher temperature than inside the freezer, into the freezer. Heat would flow from the high temperature air in the room into the freezer, causing my ice cream and anything else that's in here to melt. However, when I keep my freezer closed, how does heat flow? Well, my freezer here is actually doing work while it's just sitting here. What it's doing is it's actually causing heat to flow the opposite way of the way it normally should flow. Normally, since the freezer is cold, heat would flow from the surroundings into the freezer. But what the machine inside my refrigerator and freezer combination does is that it takes the heat and it actually causes heat to flow from the freezer into the room. That's why the back of any refrigerator or freezer gets really warm. It's taking the air out from inside the freezer and putting it into the room. Doesn't that seem backwards? Doesn't it seem really weird that heat should flow from the room into the freezer? But the job of this device is to actually take heat and transfer it from the freezer into the room, from cold to hot. This has to do with the second law of thermodynamics. Let's take a look at what that is. So now that brings us to the second law of thermodynamics which says that heat actually can flow from low to high temperature but wait you're saying that seems totally wrong mr pinelli you keep telling us that heat flows from high to low temperature always that's true but he can actually flow from low to high temperature only if work is done. So it is technically correct to say that he can flow from low to high temperature, like from, from my freezer into the room, causing the freezer to get even colder and the room to get even warmer, but that only happens if work is done. So what does that mean? What does it mean to say that heat can flow from low to high temperature only if work is done? Well, you might remember when I showed you my freezer before that I said the freezer does work to keep it cold. What's happening is the electrical energy inside the freezer is actually doing work to cause heat to flow from the low temperature freezer into the surroundings. That's why you always have to leave your refrigerator and your freezer plugged in. And that's why you can rack up a really high electric bill if you leave the freezer open all day. That's because the freezer is actively trying to take heat from the freezer and transfer it into the room, which is not the way that heat wants to flow. So you can only make heat flow from low to high temperature only if work is done, which is what the freezer is doing and why it costs me money to operate the freezer because of the electrical energy that it's using. It's doing work to stay cold. So for our third law of thermodynamics, let's go back to the freezer. And I'm gonna take out a piece of ice. This piece of ice was in my freezer the whole time. Are the molecules in this piece of ice moving around? 
a lot of people think that the molecules inside the ice are actually frozen, that they're not moving and they have no kinetic energy at all because the ice is frozen. However, that is extremely untrue. And that's because even though the ice is frozen, its molecules are still vibrating around and they still have kinetic energy. Strange to think about, but even things that are solids and completely frozen over, like even my car on a cold winter day that has been outside all night, it also has molecules that are still vibrating around, even though it looks like it's frozen like this ice cube. Do you know the temperature at which molecules stop vibrating completely? There is a temperature that is so low that that happens at. And to understand what that temperature is, we have to use the Kelvin scale. That temperature is called absolute zero. It is the lowest possible temperature on the Kelvin scale. That temperature is like negative 400 something degrees Fahrenheit. And it's about negative 273 degrees Celsius. But it's exactly zero on the Kelvin scale. You cannot get colder than absolute zero because the molecules stop moving around completely. And this ice cube, it is definitely not at absolute zero. It would have to get way colder even to be at absolute zero. So we know the ice cube is not at absolute zero and its molecules are still vibrating around. But what does that have to do with our third law of thermodynamics? A lot, actually. Our third law of thermodynamics states that absolute zero cannot be reached. Absolute zero cannot be reached. But wait! Absolute zero is a temperature. How come it can't be reached? Well, that's because if something is at absolute zero, let's say like the air molecules in the volleyball that we had earlier, heat would automatically flow into the volleyball because heat would always flow from high to low temperature. And nothing's a lower temperature than absolute zero. So absolute zero cannot exist. We can get really close to it. In fact, scientists have gotten a temperature to as low as one out of a billion Kelvin. Really small, but never to absolute zero. So we say absolute zero is this theoretical temperature at which the molecules stop moving completely, but we've never actually been able to reach that temperature in real life. Scientists have gotten very close in laboratories, but they've never actually reached it. In fact, if it was absolute zero outside, everything on Earth would die because the molecules would stop moving and heat would flow out of our bodies at a tremendous rate. So absolute zero, while it's a really cool concept and the idea of the molecules stop moving, which theoretically can happen, cannot actually occur in real life because we can't get the temperature that low that all vibration completely stops. That's the third law of thermodynamics. Even though we understand what absolute zero should be, we cannot actually reach it in real life. So to summarize our three laws of thermodynamics, the first law says that energy is conserved. Remember when I put air into this volleyball? I did work using the hand pump. And so to conserve energy, my energy was transferred by using the hand pump to the molecules inside the volleyball, causing them to speed up a little bit and vibrate faster. That's why when you pump air into something, the molecules vibrate faster, and the air that you just pumped in is initially at a higher temperature, at least until it cools down to the temperature of the room once it reaches equilibrium. The second law says that heat can only flow from low to high temperature, only if work is done. Otherwise, heat will always flow from high to low temperature. 
But this is the reason that I can keep a freezer really cold because the electrical workings of the freezer are keeping heat from entering the freezer and instead taking heat and removing it from the freezer and pumping it back into the already warmer air. The last law of thermodynamics says that even though we know absolute zero should be the temperature at which all molecules stop moving, we can't actually reach it because heat would automatically flow in and ruin the absolute zero temperature. So we know what absolute zero should be, that it should be the temperature that all molecules stop vibrating at, but it can't actually be reached. And no, we've never had a temperature lower than absolute zero because that's impossible. You can't have the molecules move less than not moving at all. So while Isaac Newton had his three laws of motion, I hope you learned something today about the three laws of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics has to do with temperature and the flow of heat, which is energy. And these three laws should be familiar to you now, just as the three laws of motion were a little while ago in one of our previous units. Thanks for watching.